today. We bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here even as we come together today, Lord. We pray that your presence would be with us. And Lord, you'll manifest in our midst, pour out your spirit upon us. Oh God, saturate us, Lord God, with your divine presence, with your anointing. Bless us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Help us that we'll become hungry and thirsty for your words, oh God. Bless us, we pray, in Jesus' precious, wonderful name. All right, so we pick up in uh, chapter 9 of Genesis as we continue our verse-by-verse study of the book of Genesis, and we will pick up with uh, verse 3 of chapter 9. He said, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. So here we see that God is uh, saying to Noah and his family that he is going to give them every moving thing uh, will become a part of their diet. And according to what we discussed last week, um, apparently from creation, Up to this point, it seems as though the diet of man uh, probably was a vegetarian diet. And this is not to say that nobody wasn't eating meat, but it seems as though the command was not given by God for humans to eat meat at that particular time. But after the the, the flood, the Lord decided to give man um, permission, legal permission now to eat meat. Whether or not they were eating it before, Uh, As I said, uh, Scripture doesn't really bear that out. But the Lord is saying now they have permission to eat meat. And that just means everything that moves. And it seems as though there is not a distinction here between clean animals or unclean animals. All the Lord said is that everything that moves, He gave permission for man to eat, to partake of um, all of these um, different um, animals. And a lot of theologians are beating their brains out trying to find out why did God permit man to eat meat. And the the scripture does not give us um, any particular reason why God gave man permission to eat meat. But the thing is, God allowed a man to eat meat, and there are some things in the Bible where God does not really give us the answer for, and God is not responsible to give us answer for everything. God chooses to explain what he wants to explain to us. That is what being sovereign is all about. God is a sovereign God, and there are some things that are revealed and some things that are not revealed. And God is not responsible to make anything known to us. Whatever He chooses to make known to us, you know, that is what He chooses to do. And uh, He chose to give man uh, the privilege to eat meat, but uh, without any um, specific reason why. And um, some people are saying that, you know, um, because of the fact that man's diet was changed from a vegetarian diet, to a diet where he he was eating meat, that probably has something to do with his longevity. Some people, well, it's two sides to it, because some people are saying because man eat meat, maybe it has something to do with his lifespan being changed, and uh, he lived a shorter life. Some people are saying that maybe God knew that things will change um, after the flood, things change drastically after the flood in the world. And some people are saying the Lord knew that there is something in meat diet that will supplement, uh, you know, whatever weakness or, you know, short, shortage uh, that will be in man's diet and God decide to supplement it with um, a, a meat diet. No, all of this is just speculation. But the thing is, the Lord allow um, man to eat meat. And he was supposed to, he had permission to eat, you know, as he said, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. But if you read before, you will see that the Lord placed 
a special protection over all of the animals. The same animals that man was supposed to eat, you know, God gave these animals a special protection in the sense that the Lord said in verse 2, And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth. You know, God placed a special protection upon all of the animals of the earth uh, so that man will not overdo it. In other words, he will just, you know, eat and kill animals, you know, left, right, and center. Uh, God placed a dread or fear upon these animals. So these animals will run away from man. The relationship between man and, and the animals change because had it not been that God, you know, placed that fear for man in animals, maybe the animal uh, kingdom might have become extinct because um, man might have, you know, indiscriminately killed all these animals, although they are trying to do it now. Go ahead, uh, Elder. Yeah, I was wondering, Pastor, I don't know if that makes sense. Mm. Um, Concerning the God Adam and to eat meat, does that have anything to do with um, concerning okay that they, um, when man sin now and Moses time um, you're supposed to kill our animals so the animals should take the blame for man sin? Mm-hmm. Does that have to do anything with the, the flesh of man connecting to the animal for sin or up to God? Well, some people are saying that because of the fact that God um, knew that animals was going to be used as sacrifice for sin. He, he probably um, allowed man to, 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 to eat um, meat, although this is not given. This is not a reason that is given. God probably allowed them to eat meat because of the fact that he knew that uh, the animals is going to be used for, um, you know, the, the, the covering of sin. And he wants man to know that um, the animal life is not on the same level as human. And maybe that's the reason why he allowed them to, 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 to kill the animal and use the animal for food. But as I said, none of this is really scripturally based. All of this is just, you know, speculation. Uh, the Bible never gives us any specific reason why the Lord allow a uh, man to really partake of, 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 of meat. But the Lord did. But, you know, what I was saying before is that the Lord placed a dread or fear in these animals, that animals will run away from man. Before um, the flood, it seems like the relationship between animal, the animals and uh, humans, it was different. The animals, they, they wasn't afraid of man, but because of sin, sin caused a change in the relationship between humans and animals. And, you know, fishes of the sea, you know, you got to, if you want to go and catch a, a couple of fishes to eat, you have to, you don't just go out and just hold them. <laughs> they will run away from you, you know, except for the domesticated animals that we have around that is tame. You know, you want to kill one, you just go out and you catch one and eat one. But you have, if you have to go out into the jungle to hunt, <laughs> they're not going to lie down and let you come and just take them. You have to, you have to be quick. And you have to use all kinds of different tricks to catch these animals. You know, you want to catch fish, you have to put bait, you know, and stuff like that, because they will run away. And that's the reason why the Lord placed a fear on uh, these animals. You know, sometimes you watch on TV and you see people going out and they're doing sport hunting. Going out and indiscriminately killing animals and just for sport. Even sometimes you see these guys who has so much time on their hands. You know, they don't know what um, being hungry is all about. They'll go out there and they uh, sport fishing. These guys going out there on the lake and they're catching these big, huge um, fish. And then they'll, you know, show off with big, you know, making, uh, taking big pictures with these fish. And uh, I guess sometimes they throw it back in the, in the lake or whatever, wherever they catch it. You know, and they, they count it, they have it as a sport. But, you know, there are people out there that are, that are so hungry, <laughs> you know, suffering. And these people, they have so much time on their hand. You know, they're wealthy and they have time on their hand. They can go out there and sport hunting, sport fishing, 
and all of these kind of things. You know, with the sport hunting, they go out there and these people with so much money, they'll go there and they'll pay to kill these animals. You know, and that is, you know, indiscriminate killing of these animals. And that's a sin. It should not really happen. But the only time we kill the animals is, is if you're going to partake of them. You're going to eat their, their meat. Because God gave permission for that. Praise the Lord. Okay, it tells us in verse 4, But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. So what the Lord is saying here, he gave them permission to eat um, flesh, animal flesh. But the Lord is saying here, but the flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. So God is saying here that a live animal, a live animal, you're not supposed to eat um, because there are some parts of the world where people just take off a part from an animal, you know, chop a part from an animal and cut a piece off, and some people start eating right away. <laughs> you know, eh? The seal? The seal? They do that to the seal? They do that to the seal? Just cut a piece off and start eating it. Right, okay. So you're not supposed to cut a piece of meat from a live animal. You know, you're supposed to let the blood, you've you got to kill the animal, cut the, the throat, let the blood drain out before you can eat that animal. You're not supposed to eat the animal while the animal, you know, eat the meat from the animal while the animal is still moving or still alive. You know, even though the animal die, you're not supposed to eat that meat either. And because, listen what it said, it tells us, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof. And that is, that is very important. So because life is in that animal, blood is in that animal, it means that life, the life there, supposed, you've got to drain it out. And you've got to drain it out so that when you drain the blood out, the blood go back like it go back to God as a sacrifice because God is the one who gives life. And the Bible is saying that the light is in the blood. So therefore, we're not supposed to eat the blood. We're not supposed to drink the blood. Remember in the New Testament, I think in Acts chapter 15, that the disciples, the apostles gave um, the Gentile Christians who were just coming into Christianity, they told them that, you know, they're not putting any great uh, restriction upon them. All they're asking is that they um, abstain from fornication, you know, and from idols and from strong old meat, and from the drinking of blood. They're not... Yes, I was coming to that. I was coming to that. That's a, that's a very good question. You know, I was coming to that. Yes, there's a lot of us, especially those of us from the islands, who know about um, blood pudding. You know, I never really ate it. I never, I never, I don't know how it tastes. Um, blood pudding... And my wife was even telling me um, in Grenada, they will get the tripe and they will put the blood in the tripe and whatever they will do with it and then they'll bake it or whatever, fry it, and then they will eat it and a lot of people like that. That is not something we as Christians are supposed to eat. I remember when I was growing up uh, in St. Vincent, from time to time people will have animals that, you know, break their neck or hang themselves. And you go up into the woods and you discover that your, your sheep or your goat or your bull cow, your, your heifer, you know, hung itself. And, you know, they will come down and they will call all the young, strong men from the village and we go up and we, they will, you know, take the skin off that cow and they will, you know, cut it up into pieces and you'll bring it into the village and the owner to recoup his losses, he has to sell that meat as at a, a very cheap price. And people will, you know, have an opportunity to buy a lot of meat because it is cheap. And, you know, we grew up knowing about eating that kind of stuff, you know, strong meat. But according to what the Bible is saying here, that is not good to eat. Those things are not, um, you're not supposed to partake of uh, meat which the blood is not properly drained. The blood has to be drained out. You, you know, you kill it, you cut the throat, and you make sure that the blood drain out, and then you are able to partake 
of the meat. Now, because the Bible said the life is in the blood. But this is not to say, this, this is not any um, law or restriction against giving blood. There are some organizations who uh, don't believe in giving blood. And, you know, hundreds of people die every year throughout the world because of the fact that they have this belief. You know, they're in the hospital, they're in a situation, in a car accident, and they had to go to the hospital. They need blood, and because they have that belief that they're not supposed to um, take blood transfusion, a lot of people lose their life, die, you know, because if you're in the hospital and you tell them that you don't want uh, blood, they have to go by your wishes. And a lot of people will rather die than to take a, a blood transfusion. And that's the reason why we have to be careful. Uh, some of these organizations and so-called places that people call church, churches, who don't believe in blood transfusion. You have to be careful when you get into these organizations because when you go in at the beginning, most people don't really know what these people believe. For instance, the Jehovah's Witness, you know, they don't believe, uh, they don't think that anybody's supposed to take blood transfusion. If you is a Jehovah's Witness and you have your sick child in the hospital and they need blood transfusion, you as a Jehovah's Witness, you can't give blood to your sick child. That will, you could do it. You could do it, but you're not going to be a good Jehovah's Witness. You know, um, if you have a brother who is a Jehovah's Witness and you are sick in the hospital and you need blood, that brother, for him to be a good Jehovah's Witness, even though he have the same blood type, and they need him to come in to give blood, he can't give. Because if he do that, he will be violating the rules of the um, Jehovah's Witness. And, you know, they don't celebrate uh, Christmas, holidays, Easter, birthdays, and all of these things. They don't vote. Do you know that? Jehovah's Witness don't vote. They don't, you can't become a, a, a union rep or any kind of thing like that. And there's so much uh, restrictions that these people have to abide by. And there's a lot of people who congregate and fellowship, flock to the Jehovah's Witness, and they abide by those rules. And we are blessed in Christianity. We don't have all of these rules. And you see how sluggish. You see how um, lackadaisical we are in our attitude, the way how we commit ourselves to God. You know, our commitment to God is not as, you know, great as these people who have all of these man-made rules that they have to abide by. And they abide by them without complaining. You know, look at the, 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 the Seventh-day Adventist folks. They don't believe in working on Saturdays. And it doesn't matter who, if you're a good uh, Seventh-day Adventist, you can't work on Saturday. And these people abide by the rules. And, uh, you know, they go and they attend their, um, their, 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 their church services on Saturday. And it doesn't matter which kind of job they have. I don't know, he probably, I'm sure that they have um, nurses out there who is um, Seventh-day Adventist. You should have... Um, Medic, people in the medical field who is Seventh-day Adventist, are they working on Saturdays? You know, when you go to um, most Christian churches these days, the majority of our ladies working in the medical field, most of them work in the hospital, in the nursing home, and most of them, they can't come to church regular on Sundays. Sometimes it's one Sunday a month or two Sundays a month. These... Um, um, sisters have to come to church because of the fact that they have to work on Sundays. And they not like how the Jehovah's Witness is committed and they say, well, Sunday is the day of the Lord and nobody can get me to work on Sunday. I'm going to come to church on Sunday and forget about what um, the job is or what the employer might say. But the Jehovah's, the, 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 the Adventist people, they abide by that. And the thing is, you know, they are surviving. And they are making out fine. I think some of these um, Adventist people who um, abide by these rules, they're probably doing better than most of us um, Sunday worshippers 
who don't even consider, um, you know, going to church regular on a Sunday and forget about working on Sunday and committing ourselves to the Lord, you know, try to get all the Sunday work that we could get. Because I personally believe that there are some Christians, because of the fact that they don't want to be in church, they will go out of their way to get Sunday work. You know, so that you can use that as an excuse. When you say, ah, sister, I haven't seen you for a while, you know, I'm working on Sunday now, you know. You know, and that is an excuse, you know, but some of them don't really have to do it. But just because of the fact that they rather go to um, work than to come to church. So they just go to, ch- go to work and they have that as an excuse. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> you know, yes, go ahead, say is man-made rules, and we don't have to abide by man-made rules. You know, the church that I got saved in had a lot, a lot of man-made rules. You know, man-made rules that I got saved in Church of God of Prophecy, and, you know, we wasn't allowed to associate with unbelievers. We couldn't play cricket. Could you imagine growing up in the islands when I got saved? I got saved in my youth. And cricket was the big thing in the islands. And... I couldn't play cricket anymore with unsaved people in the community. If we're going to play cricket, we have to get a group of Christian people together and play with them. Couldn't wear short pants in, in, in public and all of these kind of rules, you know. You can't, um, you can't associate uh, too close with um, the opposite sex, you know, and all of that. The sisters of the church, you can't be too close with them and all of these kind of things. Man-made rules. You know, I know some of the some of the rules that they had was to, you know, try to protect us from getting into sin. But a lot of the rules that they had was man-made. It wasn't biblical. Praise the Lord. So we have to be careful with man-made rules, and we don't get to tie down by these things. Okay, where we are in um, verse 5. And surely your blood, and surely your blood of your life will I require at the hand of every beast, will I require it. And at the hand of man, and at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. So, what is happening here, because of the fact that before the flood, things get out of control. The world was too violent. And what God is doing here, after the flood, God is setting rules, He's setting parameters in place. So that um, um, violence, you know, the way how violence was rampant. Before the blood, before the flood, the Bible talk about the, the imagination of man's heart was evil continually. God is setting these rules in place so that man and even animal will be held responsible for the life of humans. And this is what the scripture is telling us. And surely your, your blood of your life will I require. The word they require means to sort after, hold accountable. God is saying he's going to hold animals accountable for the life of humans. If an animal kills uh, a human being, that animal will be held accountable by God, according to what we see in um, Leviticus and other places. If uh, your animal kill somebody, or if you have your animal, and your animal have a reputation to boot people, you know, you have a goat that likes to boot people, or, you know, a sheep, or, you know, a heifer, a cow, a bull, any one of those animals, you know, a donkey that like to kick people and stuff like that, and you don't take charge of that animal, and if you see it fit to put that animal down before it kills somebody, if that animal kill a person, and they have evidence that you were warned, and you knew that your animal was a violent animal, um, the, the, in Bible time, the leaders of the community, if your animal kills somebody and you have knowledge that your animal was violent, what they'll do, they will kill the animal, put the animal to death, and you also will be put to death because of the fact that you didn't take action to bring that animal into control or to dispose of it and somebody get killed, um, you will be killed, you will be um, executed, and the animal also will be slain. And the scripture says, At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man. So when he said here, at the hand of man, he's talking about homicide, 
and it's talking about suicide. That at the hand of man there cover, cover homicide when you kill somebody, and it's, it cover suicide. Um, I think it's this week there was this guy who um, his family put in a request to the um, Ontario court to get permission to have a doctor-assisted suicide. And I think it's um, sometime Tuesday or Wednesday, sometime this week, they gave him permission to do it. And the next day, the next day, he um, got, uh, he went, uh, he, well, they said he had his eyes wide open, he faced death wide open. And I guess the doctor gave him a le- lethal dose of whatever. And uh, he, he was, um, he died. He passed on. And this guy, I think he was 80 years old. And they said he has some kind of terminal disease. And because they said that he have a few months to live, he decided that instead of being in all of that pain, you know, and suffering, he decided to take his own life. But I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what situation or circumstances you might be under. It is totally wrong for anybody to take their own life. It, it, it is a sin. Go ahead, sis. Well, that, well, it's not called suicide. It's called uh, um, doctor-assisted death. And they, they kind of refine it. They call it uh, dying with dignity. Dying with dignity. That's what they call it. They call it dying with dignity. And I think it's sometime in July coming up, July, early July, um, the, the, the government of Canada is going to make the decision uh, to make this thing legal in all of Canada. And um, what they're saying, if you have a terminal disease and you have the backing of your doctor, uh, you can get permission to, um, to die with dignity. And uh, they are even saying that they want to even extend it for, for children. Like, you know, those children in sick children hospital who have cancer and stuff like that, once they can make the decision and they say that they don't want to live anymore, they are saying that they want to even extend this privilege to children. And they are even talking about people who are um, um, insane, insane people. People who are insane and sometimes you're depressed and you tell yourself you don't want to live anymore, what they're saying that they probably might even give all of these people um, the opportunity to do that. And I think it's a very slippery, slippery slope they're going down. I'll come to you, sister. Because, in my opinion, because of the fact that they are so hungry for body parts, <laughs> they, want to, they want to harvest. <laughs> a few years ago, I'll come to you, sister. A few years ago, we was in the hospital with this sister. I think she had some kind of brain aneurysm. And, you know, she was a, a strong person, and she just developed that thing as she was in the hospital. Just a few days, she in the hospital. And I guess they realized that she's not coming back. They have these people coming around, talking to the husband, and finding out if he wants to harvest. That's what they call it, a harvesting. It's a harvest. And they want to harvest body parts. Go ahead, sis. Right. Well, that's what they, they call, they said it's dying with dignity. And they're saying that by permitting these people to use that right, um, you know, instead of having them here suffering and going through all of this different pain and medication and stuff like that, um, if they want to, the privilege to die, they want to give them the privilege to die. But my point is, is that that is suicide. It's a sin. You know, it's a sin. And we as Christians, it doesn't matter how sick we are. We have to trust the Lord. We have to hope in God. Even though you, the doctor tell you that you don't have uh, much time to live. You know, uh, life is given uh, by God and come from God. And we should not take our own life. We should not take other people's life either. Because life is sacred. And life belongs to God. And that is the reason why in, in the Bible here, God is saying that he is holding Animals are accountable for taking the life of a human, and he's also holding humans accountable for taking their own life. And he's holding you accountable for taking my life. He's holding me accountable for taking your life. So anybody that takes a person's life 
um, you know, um, premeditated, you know, murder. You kill somebody, you premeditate, you see like how um, um, Cain killed Abel. Cain went out, invite Abel to go out, out into the, 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 the woods, and he snuck up on him, and he probably hit him over the head or whatever. It was a sneaky attack. Premeditatedly kill his brother. That person, in that case, should be killed by the authorities. God gave the authorities the permission to do that. But if you accidentally kill somebody, let's suppose you and somebody get into an argument and a fight, and you know, like a bar fight, and somebody gets killed. You know, in a case like that, they, they won't execute a person. You know, they, they, it's called manslaughter. In Bible time, they used to have the cities of refuge, where if you're in a situation like that, let, let's, say, let's suppose you and somebody playing around, and all your rough playing, and somebody died. You know, the family of that person who died, they're supposed to take revenge on you. So what happens is that God makes some cities available. They are called cities of refuge. And you, as soon as that happens, don't wait. Don't even say goodbye. You have to run and find yourself in the cities of refuge. And once you find yourself in one of those cities of refuge, you can't leave, if I'm correct, if I remember correctly, you can't leave unless the high priest over that city die, then you are free. But if the family of that person that is killed find you outside the city, they have all the right to kill you. You have to stay in that city until um, the time is right. Yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah, but uh, yeah, that's why, um, <laughs> you know, as I said, they, they're trying to have his people. And, you know, because uh, they're trying to get people to sign up for um, uh, their license for donating body parts. And a lot of people, they don't sign. And what they're saying is that even though you don't, don't sign, if you don't sign your license, they're taking that as a yes. Whether you sign it yes, if you don't sign it no, they're taking a blank, um, that blank space on it as a yes. <laughs> because they, they, they're in, in great need to get um, body parts. All right, we, we, we continue. So, um, if God is setting up these rules in place so that people will not, um, you know, become ignorant and kill people out of revenge or, you know, premeditatedly kill somebody, God is setting all of these rules in place. He said, at the hand of every man's brother will, I require the life of man. So, if you, uh, your, 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 your neighbor, your brother, your sister, it doesn't matter who that person is, your greatest enemy, you don't have the right to go out and take their life. Because life is sacred, life is given by God, and uh, we can't take each other's life without a consequence. And this is what the Bible is telling us here. It, it, it tells us, well, God is continuing to set up um, rules in place. And it said in verse 6, Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. So the Lord is saying here, because God knows that he's going to have ignorant, angry people out there, and who is not going to respect the rules and the laws that is put in place by God. So God is setting up government. He's putting, um, he's establishing government so that when people break the law, when somebody um, premeditatedly kill a person, you know, God have the government in place because the government, I think it's in Romans chapter 13, Paul called them ministers of the Lord, God's minister. God have these people in government who are God ministers. I'm not talking about ministers of the gospel now. God have them as government uh, as authority figures, and they're supposed to enforce the law. So if somebody um, premeditatedly kill a person, the government's supposed to make sure that this person is guilty of the charge, and once they find out that this person is guilty of the charge, they're supposed to um, execute them. 
But today we have a lot of these countries who they outlaw execution, they outlaw hanging, and the gas chamber and all these different uh, things. There's only a few places in the United States right now, if you commit uh, murder, premeditated murder, they're going to execute you. Most places of the world, they get rid of the death penalty. And they're asking the question, why is crime escalating? Why is, um, especially our young people today, our young people today, they don't have no feelings for nobody. They will just kill anybody for any reason and nothing at all. And not only young people, people will just, they kill just for the kicks of it. But I remember when I was growing up, when I was growing up, when I hear somebody from my district, or well, from St. Vincent in general, because St. Vincent is just a small place. But when, when you hear they hang somebody in St. Vincent, it sends trill throughout the whole country. All, when I was growing up, I'm telling you, when I hear somebody get hanged, you know, and you think about, you know, them hanging somebody, you know, it sends fear through you. And even though you have the intention to become a bad person, it, it, it makes you calm yourself down. Because my father used to tell me back in his time, they used to hang people right in the court out in, uh, in the courtyard. Right in the courtyard in Kingston. My father said in his time, people, they used to hang people right there. And people go down there and be able to see um, what was going on. So because of that, people was uh, uh, afraid, you know, to get into, um, to, to kill, to, to commit crime like that. But because of the fact there is no um, penalty, is last week they were talking about there's some place in Canada where they have this um, correctional facility where they, um, people, they, the people in the jail, killers, you know, people who kill, they have a um, uh, place where they go on the golf, and they have a place where they overlook in the lake, and they have so much, you know, amenities that they have they can enjoy. And it was a while back, I think somebody take the um, Canada Correctional um, to court so that they can have the right to watch uh, pornography in jail. They, they have all the internet, all the internet, all the channels that you're watching, and some of us don't have a lot of channels because some of us use using rabbit ears. <laughs> People in jail getting all those channels. Legally, they have to watch it. They have to give them to them. They have to give it to them. Yes. And they, they, they're talking about, um, you know, not giving them pornography. And the guy take them to court and he won. And they have to allow them to watch pornography. In the States, they don't have that law. It's some time ago they were talking about right here in Toronto where you could go in the library and right in the library you can go on the computer and you can watch any kind of pornography you want. I don't know if they change it yet, but it was a few months ago that John Tory was saying that that needs to be changed. So you could go right in the library and you can watch anything you want to watch. But, you know, the government, God, put them in these positions so that when people... You know, don't want to abide by the rules. They don't want to live in harmony with their, their fellow men. And you want to, you know, get on ignorant and kill people. They're supposed to execute them. When, when you have a premeditated murderer, when you keep him in jail and he escapes or he parole and he come out, because when they put somebody in jail and they say for life, for life is not for life like before, you know. <laughs> when they tell somebody, when they give you for life, for life is about 20, 25 years. And after that, if you behave yourself good, you go in there and you say you become born again, you start going to church in jail and all of that, that cut a whole lot off of your um, time. And in no time at all, you, you get out. And the, some of these people who kill and they go to jail and they let them out, they come out again and they kill again. And the thing is, if they, if they obey what the Bible said, if somebody kills somebody, premeditatively kill a person, and you find them guilty and you execute them, you know what happens? They can't kill again. Some people say, well, you know, executing people don't really change and you don't really help society. Yes, it helps society. Because that person who you execute, they, that is one person you don't have to worry about again. That person gone. But, you know, they say today that, you know, it's wrong to do that. It's wrong to premeditate to kill somebody, but if somebody premeditatedly kill a person, it is also wrong to kill them. And that is, that is the way society 
is going today, and no wonder, nobody have no fear for anything. Nobody don't fear the authorities, you know, because they know, uh, what, you know, people will face off to the police. What are you going to do to me? I guess that's the reason why some of these police officers, they're killing them. Because they know when they go to jail, they're not going to face any kind of um, great consequence. You know? The Lord help us. And until we get back to Bible principle, this world is not going to have any kind of a changes. And this is the reason why the world is not going to change. Nothing good, nothing better is going to come. Because the world don't want to go by the rules that is set forth in the Bible. Amen. All right. I think we should close there for today. Uh, is there any um, question or comment anybody would like to make before we close? In some studies where we're talking about, um, let's go back a little with um, the flood. Yeah. We, we were asking if there is any evidence, earthly evidence. And um, you have some Russian scientists. They plan they're going to, they're going to dig the earth, going as far. So they started to dig. Mm-hmm. And they reached several um, kilometers. And when they reached the volcano, seven is, is that number. Mm-hmm. And they experienced some kind of thing there. They are under, almost a stop. Mm-hmm. Then they go down to 12 kilometers. And you know 12 is that number too. And when they reach there, they, they just couldn't go farther because what they say, you know, as more they deep, they go find density in the rock. But when they come to the dig, they're still finding water. Mm. So then they get to acknowledge, they say, what, if there was a flood and shoot? Because something, when they reach 12 kilometers, something miraculous has happened. All the equipment just start to fail. Mm-hmm. Just have to malfunction. They can't go farther. And it, it, was a, it was a big secret. They keep for a long time. And they just have to discontinue. Because there is, they say there is something on there mm-hmm. that God don't want, them, don't want them to see. <laughs> so they have to discontinue and come back up. Well, yeah, even to, to add to that, what they're saying too is that under the earth itself, under the sea, there is only three and a half miles of dirt that is under the sea. Three and a half miles. That's, um, when, you, when, you, when you go and check that out. Three and a half miles of dirt that is under the sea. But on land itself, it's about 20, 25 miles, 25 miles of dirt that is under the, the, the surface of, of the earth itself, 25 miles deep. And that's the reason why, because of the fact that under the sea, the, the land that is there is so thin. That's the reason why most of the earthquakes of the world, the great earthquakes, they start out there because out there is a lot thinner than on land. So most of the earthquakes start out there in the sea because of the fact that the, the plate out there is very thin. Praise the Lord. All right, uh, sister, you want us to ask something? Else? Uh, I don't. I don't believe in that. Um, um, uh, that, uh, <laughs> that. That you see, in my opinion, if I don't see something in the Bible, um, I don't think we should really play around with these kind of things. And uh, a lot of people get into these things because uh, look at some of these people from um, some of these Muslim countries that don't um, happy when they have a girl child. You know, even when they go and they get the ultrasound test and they go and they discover that it's a girl, a lot of them get it really child. And that's the reason why even in Canada here, they, they're saying that they, they, they're going to stop give out um, ultrasound uh, tests until... Uh, unless that uh, pregnancy reached to a certain age, a certain date, that they can't get rid of the child. I don't, I, don't, I don't really have all the information I'm supposed to have on that, but personally, I don't believe in that. I won't do that. And I think, you know, a Christian shouldn't get involved in that. If, uh, I know sometimes we might need help, because let us suppose you're... You, um, you know, you, you, you're married and you have your wife, you have your, your, your wife and uh, she not becoming pregnant after a while. You might have to go to a doctor and get some help. But there's so much help that we as Christians, we should really accept. We, there, there, there's boundaries. And when, when we start to get into some of these areas, you know. You Knowing that we are living in the last and closing days. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And help us, O God, to remember your word, have final authority, and help us, O God, to place 
the word of God first place in our life. Continue to bless us, we pray, in Jesus' precious, wonderful name. Amen.